Hello, my name is Andy Cockgreave and I want to help you make your data go from boring to beautiful by making an impact with better design. Thank you very much for joining this session. My name is Andy Cotgreave. I'm author of this book, The Big Book of Dashboards, uh, which came out a few years ago. Uh, I wrote with Steve Wexler and Jeff Schaefer. And I work at Tableau Software and I've been thinking deeply about design and how that applies to business intelligence for the last nine years. So thank you for joining. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to give you a bunch of tips to try and help you think differently about the way you present your data. Why? Because you might have made a massive strategic investment into business intelligence platforms, collection, storage, and analytics, preparation. And if you're not presenting it properly to your end users, you're almost losing the entire point of that, uh, that investment. Now, why is this important? Take a look at this quote. This comes from Kim Rees, who uh, founded a great organization called Periscopic, who do good with data. She says, data visualization is a language, a means to convey an opinion or an argument. This is what we are going to use when we build dashboards or charts to communicate internally. Check out this example. This comes from 2011. It was by Simon Scar of the South China Morning Post. And it shows the number of deaths in Iraq month by month from 2003 to 2011. What do you see when you see this chart? You see a smear of blood dripping down the screen. So Simon Scott won awards with this and it's largely down to the fact that he chose the color red and he pointed the bars upside down to make a really strong emotive response in the users. Brilliant piece of work. But I thought, what if I just change some of those decisions? What if we turn the bars up the normal way up, pointing upwards? And what if we change the color to a more neutral blue? In that case, I can actually change the title completely because in, here we have uh, the second Gulf War, very high monthly deaths, then significant monthly deaths during 2006 to 2007. But then look at this. The number of monthly deaths dropped to their lowest point. So this same chart can actually tell a story, deaths on the decline. When you are visualizing data and making design choices, you have the power, consciously or not, to change the message and change the way things use. This is the importance of design thinking, whether you're making emotive charts or operational dashboards. So what does it mean to sort of think like a designer? Uh, a book that really inspired me was uh, Don Norman's The Design of Everyday Things. Absolutely amazing book. In it, right at the start, he says, designers make pleasurable experiences. Obviously, looking at deaths in Iraq is a tragedy. So uh, you could say designers of visualizations make emotional or engaging experiences. And that's something I want everybody to sort of take heart as they do analysis or lead teams of, uh, lead teams of analysts. So what does that mean, though? Pleasurable experiences within visualization design. I'm going to show you two different uh, dashboards that were both built in Tableau. Uh, and I want you to sort of think which you prefer and why. So this one, this one is taken from our book and it shows, you know, what would happen in a, 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 a subscription business. So this is all fictional data. But just for a moment, take two seconds to absorb the design, the way this is uh, laid out and the chart choices. Now contrast that with this one. Here's another one designed by a Tableau expert, Mike Kisneros shows the price of oil and gold over the last 20 or 30 years. In this one, the time is going down the y-axis. You've got the price of gold over here and the price of oil over here. Two very different approaches. And what I find is some people prefer this one. Some people prefer this one. And the kind of reasons that are probably going through your head is, well, this one has much more detail. It's laid out as a grid. It's better for operational. You can see the entire coverage of the business. It's great. Has color for alerts. You can see whether things are going well or not. Whereas this one is engaging. It's beautiful. It tells a story. 
there's less information and thus there's more to consume. The designer has done the work for you and made something uh, that looks amazing and tells a very specific story. You know what? Of course, whichever one you prefer, both of these are great. I have in the past generally said the one on the left is functional and the one on the right is beautiful, but uh, my co-authors always give me a hard time because they say, well, this is beautiful too. Of course, And of course it is. If your goal is to make an operational monitoring dashboard, you want this one on the left. You do not want this one on the right. But the point being, as somebody doing analytics, creating presentations, creating dashboards, or leading a team to do it, you have to think which... What are you trying to achieve and how? which bits of function or beauty do you take into your approach? So let's go back to Don Norman. In his book, he has uh, three levels of processing. He says, if you're going to think like a designer, and if you're doing visual analytics, you should be thinking like a designer. He, ha he says there are three levels of processing. Uh, whenever you as an end user consume something, an object that is being designed, you have three levels of processing. So uh, here, here's an oldish Samsung phone. Uh, this is this is a nice example. When I have an object like this, I'm going to go through three levels of processing. I'm going to have a visceral response to it. I'm going to react to the way it looks. I'm going to have a behavioral response. I'm going to try and use the phone. And maybe I can complete the task of making a phone call or not. And then I'm going to have a reflective level where I sort of think, well, I look, the phone looked good and it was easy to use. I reflect and go, I love my Samsung smartphone. The first one of these is visceral. And what we're going to do is look at each of the three levels of processing. Visceral, behavioral and reflective. And think, how can we apply those to the way we design dashboards? So the first one is visceral. And uh, this visceral means how you respond to something in the first milliseconds of seeing it, right? Now, this is really important. And I'm going to read a quote from Don Norman's book here because if, if you are an engineer, you might like this quote. So th this is my tattered copy of Don Norman's book. And in it, he says, when talking about visceral response, he says, engineers and other logical people, that's me and possibly a lot of you, tend to dismiss the visceral response as irrelevant. Engineers are proud of the inherent qualities of the work and dismayed when inferior products sell better just because they look better. Now, The Design of Everyday Things is a profoundly important book. If you're into design, you should read it. He does dismiss engineers quite a lot in this book as people who don't think uh, beyond logic and don't think in terms of the way things look. So that's a bit dismissive. And I'm sure you as an engineer do care about things look how do care about how things look too. But his point being, we have a visceral response to things we see. So I'm going to show you an example of a, t of a dashboard just to prove that visceral responses matter. So here you go. The visceral response will happen in milliseconds. Here comes the dashboard. That shudder that you felt as you just went, ugh, is the visceral response, right? You looked at that and thought, oh my gosh, this is awful. Now, I have to confess, this is actually a dashboard that was designed by somebody in Tableau for a marketing, uh, in, 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 for a marketing dashboard. And what the person had done was put all the information that had been requested onto the dashboard. So they kind of ticked that box, but they had not thought about this visceral response. You know, as you look at this dashboard, are you likely to ever go back to this dashboard again? I mean, I wouldn't because I can't see anything. And this is why this visceral response is fundamentally important. That first response really matters. Now, even when you've got a great dashboard design, the design itself will change. What, what, what is good viscerally, what is trendy design, will change. Uh, this, is an ex this dashboard also comes from the, my dashboards book, and it's again about a subscription to a fictional business. Now, 
I really like the visceral layout of this dashboard. It, it's one of my favorites from the book. It's just calm. Everything's quite easy to see. You know, there's nothing overwhelming me cognitively. And that's really important. Uh, and this was this was designed in 2017. Now, I took this dashboard and I re redesigned it in Tableau version 3, which would have come out about 10 years ago. What's your visceral response to this dashboard? It's pretty ugly, right? But here's the secret. Here's the dirty secret. 10 years ago, Tableau was hailed as the revolution of brilliant design because all the other products in the industry were doing 3D charts, graded fills, really sort of shiny stuff with no functional value. Tableau came along and did this great design. But now it looks dated. So even when you think like a designer, you've always got to be on top of uh, your dashboard. Some, if you've had got a dashboard that's active and has been for about five or six years, you'd, you'd better have been updating it to just make sure it looks great. This dashboard in production, you know, even since we published the book, this has changed a great deal now because we've recognized things change. So that was it. Goal one, create a dashboard that looks really amazing. Goal two is to have a good behavioral level of processing. Thinking about this from my design metaphor, you unbox your Samsung and then you try and turn it on and use it and set up your accounts. That's the behavioral level. I have a job to do. Can I do this? Now, look, remember on phones, I mean, this one's what, five years old? They ha It had a one button underneath, right? And yet it, the screen could offer all this functionality. Uh, these days, here's, here's today's Samsung. This is an S10. Oh, there's my kids. You know, now there's no buttons, right? So we have come to love these beautiful black, sleek black designs, but there's absolutely nothing that tells me how to use it. So we have to work out the balance of visceral beauty between people knowing how to use their uh, object. Let me show you how this works in terms of dashboards. First thing, how about chart choice? When a user comes to your dashboard, they have a question about data that they are trying to answer. Are sales going up? Are they going down? Are they bigger than last year? Which region is highest? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your job or your team's job as the chart designers is to choose the right chart to answer those questions. Here's an example, right? 10 years of fictional sales for two products. How would you chart? How would you visualize this data? A line chart, I'm sure one of you is thinking. A bar chart both perfectly valid but the answer to that is as complicated as we have time you know we could do iterations a table might be the right way to visualize this data you might need the end user to see the specific values if you do a line chart even that choice is kind of riddled with uh challenges because here i've done a line chart breaking the two products into two what if i just wanted one line chart with them both summed together they both answer different questions or I could show a slope chart. Uh, a slope chart hides all the information in the, in the middle. It just shows the start and end of the data set. And that shows growth over a time period, comparing the values more clearly than the line chart. And so on and so on and so on. Right? The choices are many. Right? Having a great product that allows you to explore every single iteration very, very quickly and then throw away the one that you, or only keep the one that you need is it vital to a successful data uh, data strategy? You know, and uh, that means that just with a simple table of numbers, with just 20 numbers, we have a very complex thing. It could be like these. All of these are valid. Um, that's the importance of the team of great analysts thinking, what am I doing for an end user? And, you know, increasingly, we're trying to automate a lot of this process. We might think, well, we'll do this with AI or machine learning. We'll let, the, we'll let the tool build the right chart. Well, a machine would probably just build this chart because it would look at its algorithm would be very unlikely to more, be, less, be sophisticated enough to think beyond the line chart. And yet, who knows? Only you as a human being knows which ones of these is the right approach to take. So getting... 
that chart choice right is vital to your end users being able to answer the questions they want to do. Here's another one, focusing attention. I'm going to show you two versions of a chart that shows customers by day of the week. And I want you to think, well, what do you conclude from looking at the chart? Okay, what do you conclude from the chart that shows customers by day of the week? Chart one. Chart two. In which of those two charts was there a stronger conclusion that was easier to make? It was the latter one, right? Color is just one example of formatting that you can use in your designs to highlight the thing the users need to see first. Maybe the dashboard is monitoring weekends. If that's the case, you can use color, this rich gift given to us by evolution to draw attention to the right thing. If all you do is throw colors on your dashboard because you can, you're just making pretty rainbows, which are not useful. Color is this rich thing. I could say, let's focus on the days of the week. Let's focus on Tuesday, the biggest day of the week. Or let's arbitrarily compare Sunday and Thursday. It's really important to think, when you're thinking like a designer, thinking how does the end user confirm that this, get the answers to the questions they need. Now, the behavioral level of processing, as talked about by Don Norman, is the subject of an entire book about dashboards, entire courses about data visualization. I could go on and talk about any single one of these. Layout, overviews, URLs, tooltips, KPIs. Do you want summary? Is it beginners? Are they looking at this every day? Are they going to look at it on a mobile or a desktop? Every single one of those has to be considered by your analytics team or by you if you are the dashboard designer in order to make success. This is absolutely vital. If you want to get the behavioral and visceral processes right, you have to be thinking about these things. And the final level of processing is reflective. Let's go back to our, dash, our Samsung phone. I looked at it. I thought it looked gorgeous. I mean, it kind of looks dated now, doesn't it? So let's let's uh, let's go back to, you know, the the nice Samsung Galaxy S9. Oh, it looks lovely, right? I managed to get my jobs done behaviorally. It was designed so that I could do my jobs. And then I put my phone down and I go, did I like using that phone? Yes, I did. What you've done or what, what has happened in that process is you've, the, as a designer, the designer was creating something that looks nice. People respond positively to it. It behaviorally works. They can get their jobs done and then they leave. They finish using that object and they reflect positively on it and they're going to come back and use your dashboard again. That is what our jobs as analysts and as leaders of team teams of analysts or as people who are investing in data strategies have to think about. Tools that collect and store and prepare and manga, wrangle and analyze data are vital to your BI strategy, absolutely without a doubt. But if you aren't thinking about what actually happens to the data at the end of the process, I ask you the question, what is the point of the investment if your teams cannot communicate insight? What is the point of the investment if your users cannot understand the output of those analytics teams? All those massive petabytes and zettabytes and gigabytes and terabytes of data are sitting being churned around your processes and not actually being used to drive any change. So the design level of a data analytics strategy is fundamentally important to what you're going to try and achieve. I've just given you uh, a few examples about how data visualization is as rich as writing words. It is as vital to get your charts saying the right things as it would be in a written document to your shareholders. To make an impact with data, to go from boring to beautiful, You've got to get your teams or get yourself thinking like designers. So with that, I hope that has been an interesting 20 minutes. I'd really love to know your thoughts. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. You can get in touch with me on LinkedIn. Um, and I'd love to see the kind of things you do from design thinking. That is the end of my, our time together. 
My name has been Andy Cockgreave. I'm technical evangelist at Tableau. Uh, wherever you are, I wish you a fantastic rest of your day. Take care. Bye.